The Darkest Web. Hey there, creepy companions. How you holding up? I hope you're staying well and keeping your spirits up as best you can. I don't know about you, but summertime is usually when the Halloween bug really starts to bite. Normally by now, I'd actively be making props and costumes in preparation of the big night. Not so this year. I've been finding it rather hard to plan for much of anything, for several reasons, but mostly because everything feels so up in the air. I've had a bit of inspiration recently, which I'll touch on towards the end of this segment. But first, perhaps sharing a new batch of websites and links will help get us all in the mood. Let's begin by talking about stuff to watch. I've been really curious about the Creep Show series from 2019, so I decided to go ahead and sign up for the free seven-day trial of Shudder to check it out. It's a horror anthology series of six episodes with two stories per episode. Each episode begins with a creep thumbing through a horror comic book. As can be expected with any anthology, some stories are stronger than others. But all in all, I think it's well worth your time. If you appreciate purposely schlocky, fun, gross-out horror comics, then this show is for you. There are quite a few standouts in the casting, featuring fan favorites such as Adrian Barbeau, Tobin Bell, and Jeffrey Combs. Greg Nicotero is a producer on the show, and he directs a couple of the stories. Tom Savini steps into the director's chair, too, in the final story. And I'm happy to say there will also be a second season at some point. I also watched Nosferatu on Hulu. I have to admit, I avoided this show simply because I find the title to be kind of obnoxious. N-O-S, the number four, A, the number two. Something about that just makes me roll my eyes. But my curiosity got the better of me. The series is based off the novel of the same title, written by Joe Hill, who is Stephen King's son. And you can definitely see how inspired Joe is by his dad's writing. It had a very King vibe about it. The gist is this. This creepy supernatural dude named Charlie Manx drives around in his Rolls Royce Wraith abducting kids. A teenage girl named Vic McQueen and her friend Maggie both have supernatural abilities that allow them to track Manx, and they set out to stop him from his nefarious deeds. I really liked it. It's fun and dark and something different. No spoilers, but the first season ends as a cliffhanger. There is a season two, but I haven't watched it yet. Nosferatu is available on a variety of streaming services such as Hulu, Amazon, Philo, and AMC. So all we Halloween lovers know that summer is the season to shop till you drop for Halloween stuff. Here's a list of my favorite things I've seen for sale online so far this year. Grandin Road has released their Halloween Haven offerings for 2020, and as usual, there's a whole lot of super overpriced stuff. But there's one thing that's too cool not to mention. Check out the Deluxe Animated Ghost Mirror. It's a mirror with a motion sensor that, when activated, triggers a blue light that reveals a figure dragging its hands up and down the interior surface of the mirror. Spooky. It's $159. Target has started to preview some of the new items for 2020 hide and eek boutique on their website, including some cool primate skeletons, a small monkey for $6, a large monkey for $15, and a gorilla for $40. They have a couple of cool LED projector lights, one of which features a blue ghostly woman and the other a green skeleton. Those are $25 each. Currently, the ghost woman light is sold out for pre-order, but it will be available on the 27th of August. So Spirit Halloween has a large selection of new animated props this year. I've seen quite a bit of trash-talking spirits wares, and I get it. It's definitely cheaply made stuff that breaks easily and isn't the most original conceptually, but I definitely think some items have their merits, and I'm going to highlight the ones I like best or that seem notable. Of course, a talented haunter could create a much better version of every one of these props, but if you want a quick prop that can easily be improved with a bit of gussying up, these are promising. The first is called the Nightcrawler. This guy is down on all fours, but his body is just wrong in a good way. His joints bend in wrong angles, and he has a huge gaping mouth, which always gives me the heebie-jeebies. Also, his feet look like another pair of hands. His eyes glow red, and when his motion sensor is triggered, he pops up his head, snarls, and sways slowly from side to side. I think he'd be a standout with just some mild tweaks, maybe filling out the limbs a little bit, giving him a better tattered outfit. He too is $199. The six-foot wailing phantom is another one I like. It's a grayish figure in a tattered gown holding a lantern in its knobby hands. 
The mouth movement is better than you frequently see, and the eye animation is pretty cool too. The eyes have a bluish glow, and they appear to sort of dart around a bit. The angle of the body and the head are also kind of cool in a sort of hunched, unnerving tilt. This thing is 350 bucks though, so definitely get your coupons ready. Next, let's talk about the Harvester of Souls. This one stands over six feet tall, wears a black cloak, and raises up a little girl he's holding. When he raises the girl to be level with his giant open mouth, a fog machine inside the little girl figure sprays fog from her gaping mouth that is vacuumed up into the large figure's mouth, as if he's sucking out her soul. The fog is illuminated with a green LED. Once he's done sucking out her foggy life force, her head drops, and he lowers her limp body. Honestly, I love this thing. Some folks online say that the noise of the vacuum is so loud that it's ridiculous, but having never seen or heard it in person, I can't say. The Harvester of Souls is $299. They also have a new Krampus figure. It's based off the character in the 2014 movie, who looks more like an evil Santa rather than the traditional devilish Krampus of folklore. It's really big, like seven and a half feet tall, and it's $350. I mean, it looks good. I'm just biased because I really prefer a more traditional style Krampus, but give it a look and see what you think. They have a creepy ass hunched over skinny nurse figure called Miss Mercy that's kind of interesting. She has a bloody bandage over her eyes as if they've been gouged out. Her head rotates 360 degrees, but not in the way that Reagan's does in The Exorcist. It's more forward leaning, which I think is what makes it more of an interesting visual. She laughs maniacally, turns slowly from side to side, and makes gross cracking neck sounds. I think she'd be a cool addition to a hospital themed haunt display. She costs $100. They also have a Plague Doctor figure, which is fitting for 2020. However, I don't think this guy looks scary at all. They somehow made one of the creepiest figures in history look like he's just a mildly irritated, skinny, tall bird man. He's seven and a half feet tall, wears a brown robe and mask, and for some reason holds a staff with skulls impaled on it. He's $230. In my opinion, probably the scariest thing about this one is the creepy wheezing noises he makes. But again, take a look and see what you think. And the last spirit animatronic I'm going to talk about is called Mr. Salty. I just had to tell you about this one simply because of the absolutely ridiculous innuendo going on with it. Actually, no, not innuendo. It's far too obvious to be called innuendo. Let me explain this thing. Okay, so you have a tall clown man in trench coat who flashes open his coat to reveal a short clown who is right at crotch level who happens to be named Willie. The large clown says stuff like, I bet you my clown knows you've never seen this before. And hey, have you seen my little pal? And last but not least, the real impression maker goes like this. Hey, you there. I got a little something to show you. I think you're gonna like it. Come a little closer. Surprise! Uh, I love it when he pops out like that. I mean, wow. Nothing says trick or treat like sexual misconduct from a perverted clown. Bold move, Spirit Halloween. Bold move. He's $350, by the way. The last spirit-related thing I want to mention, they do have a few new lines of home decor that might be of interest, including some really fun Beetlejuice and trick-or-treat stuff. When I think the Bradford Exchange, I tend to think of kind of lame tchotchkes that grandmas collect, but you should see their cool new line of spooky miniature houses. They have a new series of collectibles called America's Most Haunted Illuminated Village Collection. The first house they're offering is the Amityville Horror House. It's really neat looking, very detailed resin house that's got lots of hand-painted details. It also lights up, giving the windows a warm glow, and you can see a mysterious silhouette in the window. Each house includes a little card that looks like a newspaper that tells you all about the events that took place in each house and about the supposed hauntings. The second house in the series will be Franklin Castle, which is supposedly the most haunted house in Ohio. There will be five houses offered in the series, costing about $60 each. Uh, I'll put a link in the show notes for you. Go take a peek. Trick or Treat Studios has some super fun new masks available for pre-order that you really should see. For a lot of kids of the 70s and 80s, Scooby-Doo was a beloved cartoon show that was mildly spooky fun. Take a look at the Mr. Hyde and the Creeper masks. They're a perfect likeness of those characters and run between $49 and $59. Or there's a vacuform version of the Creeper for $20 if you really want to keep it old school and nostalgic. They also have some great scary stories themed masks. 
of the Pale Lady, Harold the Scarecrow, and the corpse who was missing its big toe. Those run between $59 and $79. Check them out at trickortreatstudios.com. Home Depot has their Halloween wares on their website now, and there are a few things you you need to see. The first is the totally awesome 12 foot tall skeleton. This behemoth has animated eyes and costs $299 and is absolutely worth taking a look at. They also have an awesome hearse. It's the old school driven by a horse kind, horse sold separately. The driver is a skeleton guy, dressed in a dapper hat and tailcoat, whose mouth moves as he speaks and laughs. The hearse stands just over 5 feet tall and is about 6 feet long and costs $350. If you've got a carnival or circus-themed haunt, you might need their 6-foot-tall jack-in-the-box. This piece features a giant-headed creepy clown swaying from side to side on his spring. He speaks and laughs and has light-up eyes. Pretty cool. This will cost you $199. Also take a look at their seven and a half foot tall winged demon. His face is pretty creepy with a fairly detailed sculpt. When his motion sensor is triggered, his eyes glow, his mouth moves as he speaks, and his head turns from side to side as his wings move up and down. It's a lot of animation going on. He's $229. The last Home Depot prop I want to mention is actually a package or kit of props. It includes a grave digger, a posable skeleton, and a five pack of tombstones. The grave digger is animated. He moves his torso side to side as well as his head. His right arm holds up a lantern and it moves as if he's shining the light around. His mouth moves as he speaks and he says six different phrases. The total kit costs $199. So I want to say that I've seen folks online discussing what will become of Halloween this year, if trick-or-treat will happen, or if Halloween will be canceled. I'm sure it's on all of our minds, and I really feel for all the pro haunters who are going to be severely hurt by the closures and cancellations due to this damn virus. It just sucks, and there's no way around it. As for us homies, it's almost certain that Halloween will not be celebrated in exactly the same way as we have in pre-pandemic times. Courses will vary according to the area in which you live, what decisions your local government makes, as well as what personal decisions we all make about what we feel safe doing and what we don't. If you want some fun ideas of how you can celebrate from now until Halloween, I definitely want to recommend you check out Spooky Little Halloween's blog post entitled How We're Going to Save Halloween 2020. She has a lot of ideas about ways to participate in online events and interact virtually with other Halloween lovers all over the globe. And for some ideas about how to make trick-or-treat happen safely, do a YouTube search about candy delivery systems. Also take a look at Senor Scary's blog post called How to Hand Out Candy Safely. I'll include the links to my favorite YouTube videos about different ways you can hand out candy, as well as to Senor Scary's blog post in the show notes. I plan to revive my Shadow Swamp theme this year, so I'll be using a pool cleaning net to hand out candy to the kiddos. I'll replace the screen netting with fishing net and corpse up the handle to look like rotten swamp wood. No matter what happens, rest assured, Halloween is never canceled. Adjustments will have to be made in regard to how we celebrate this year, but haunters will always find a way to celebrate Halloween. It's not just something we like, it's part of who we are. And as haunters, we're creative people. When a problem arises with a prop, we adjust, we troubleshoot, and we make it happen however we can. Does that mean the prop will work exactly like we'd originally intended? Maybe not. Does that mean the whole haunt is ruined? Of course not. While it's disappointing as hell, do not despair, haunters. Do what you do best. Get creative, get inventive, and make Halloween happen in a way that makes you happy and keeps you and your community safe. And with that, I'll step off my dusty, coffin-shaped soapbox and retreat back into the deepest corner of my darkest web. I'm going now. Heaven help you. Please like and follow the podcast. Stalk us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Links in the description. And help us by sharing HauntCast with all your haunted Halloween brethren. Until next time, stay scary.